Hello, this vlog is long overdue. And eh, not really, fuck off. It's like three weeks into January. As I do every year, as I've been doing for the last 40 years-ish, I uh, make a video breaking down exactly what we brought in as a business. In terms of revenue, in terms of profit, in terms of expenses, how we made each one of them dollars, and what I project for the, for the following year. And luckily, I don't think I made a projection video for 2020. Because if I did, I would have probably sounded like a fucking moron. And I would have been like, yeah, we're about to make a zillion dollars this year. Pre-COVID, I would have sounded real, 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 real dumb. Instead, I only sounded semi-dumb for most of the year. If you guys have watched these before, they're very, very, very transparent. Literally, I got my sheet up. This is, I do my own accounting with my shit. Like I have everything from the date, the quarter, exactly what was purchased, the amount, the IRS classification. I'm not playing on my Excel sheets. We go into exactly how much we brought in, exactly how we brought that in, what we project going forward, and just like insights and analysis behind it. Because a lot of times you go on YouTube and you search like, how much do YouTubers make? Because I know a lot of you guys find this shit interesting. And I also think a lot of the appeal of the brand that we've put together at Big Dogs is our transparency and our, our authenticity, both on like a personal and personality level, but on the business side, like a lot of people find this shit interesting. A lot of the times, if you go to search something like how much do YouTubers make, those YouTubers always make videos based on just the ad revenue that they bring in from YouTube ads, okay? So like Google ads and Google owns YouTube. They pay you out in Google AdSense space. That's like the platform that they pay you for advertising. So every time you go onto a YouTube video, you see a before video, you see a video that pops up before the YouTube video starts. You'll Maybe you'll see a video in like four minutes that goes into the middle of the video and then one at the end of the video that you watch and then creators get paid because of those advertisements. I'm not gonna put any advertisements in this video because fuck it. We ain't trying to make money. We're just trying to tell you about money in this one. That's what most YouTubers tell you about. They don't actually tell you the money that they're really making. Because that shit, the YouTube, the Google AdSense, nonsense it's such a small 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 portion of what creators make as long as they have any fucking lick of an idea of like how to generate money or how to run a business once you have an audience you can monetize in a ton of different ways you can really get creative with it and the sky's the fucking limit with how much money you can bring in think about it this way like content creators are the new small business like each content creator in itself is legitimately a small business that's the way i think about this shit nowadays like someone who has fifty thousand followers on youtube that's the same thing as a brick and mortar store 15 years ago, 20 years ago, like you have a steady supply of foot traffic at the brick and mortar store, you have a steady supply of eyeballs on your content, right? They get into the store, you sweet talk them a little bit, you sell them, you get them onto your video, you sweet talk them a little bit, you sell them. Now, this is not me like trying to pitch you or anything. I'm just, this is just very high level, high viewpoint, point of view way a business works. There's a million ways to monetize. Most people don't tell you about those other ways. I don't know why. I don't know, like this, these videos, I think these would be very interesting if I was not a creator and I wanted to like understand more of the business side from a creator standpoint, I would get into the share. I would be happy if my favorite creator did get into the shit, which is why I do it for you guys. And just to keep myself accountable and be like, Nick, you gotta make more motherfucking money this year because you ain't growing. So let's pull up the income only. We will end the year at 219-56546. 219,000. $565.46 income only income. Okay. Revenue is everything you bring in. So that number is revenue. We spend money to operate a business. So we're going to look at expenses, expenses. Woo! We spent a lot of money this year. God damn uh, expenses. Nine, two, two, zero, four, two, one, ninety two thousand two hundred four dollars, twenty one. Y'all can do the math. Whatever the first number was two sixteen minus 92 flip that uh, one Oh eight in profit. 124 in profit trying to be all smart and shit there. See what happens when I don't use my calculator on the rip. So we brought in a profit of 124. We had a revenue of 216. We had an expense matter of 92. Now I know why the expenses was much higher this year than they were in any previous year. Like $92,000 is a lot of money. Like most of this shit is just coming out of my straight pocket, right? Like we are a business in a sense, but realistically, like I'm the only one that handles money and we don't have any full-time employees. So like up to this point, we've been an LLC which means that I'm a sole proprietor up to this point. So any tax that happens on my business is literally just like, I get taxed the same way that my business gets taxed as an LLC. I'm a one man show. Any income that the business makes is basically just taxed as a personal income to me until we become a corporation and we start actually hiring full-time people. So that being said, basically, you know, if you had told me in the beginning of the year, like, yeah, you're just gonna shell out $92,000 of your own money, I would have been like, 
Sounds about right. We'll talk about the income first. Now, typically I do this on the whiteboard actually, I realized, but I didn't feel like setting up the whole shit and I hope you guys like can just hang with me and be like, oh, cool. Dick's just fucking lazy and sitting at the table. Whatever, whatever, whatever. As we've gotten a little bit older, we've been able to put all of our income sources almost streamlined in a sense. For a while, like when I first started off, right? When I first started doing this YouTube shit, I was younger, I was like, I don't know, 22 or 23. I was kind of scraping, trying to figure out how I'm gonna make money. I had marketing clients, I was doing YouTube stuff. I was doing a bunch of fucking makeshift jobs of fucking slap band-aids on the bills and whatnot. And income was coming from everywhere and it was difficult to kind of keep track of what was going on and 1099s from over here, 1099s from over here, fucking 1332s from over here. Now we've gotten to a place where we kind of know where we're making money from. We know where we're getting that money from. I will say just like a, a preface, I guess, a preface analysis was that we made, I wanna say we made, we flirted with 200 last year for the first time. And so this year we didn't actually grow. I almost probably say the profit margin went down a little bit because our expenses went up so high because I'll get into it in a little bit, but the, the studio in a sense I would use as an expense. What I had projected for growth was way, way higher. I almost probably, if I did make a projection video, I would have said we were probably closer to the 375 range, 400, maybe on a really good year, we could have hit half a million, but COVID happened and realistically, like I'm, like, I'm not, listen, money is not something that's going to dictate how I feel for the most part, uh, unless it stops me from like doing something that makes me happy. You know, money is not the thing that makes me happy. I just understand that money is the is the roadblock to maybe giving me the freedom to being happy. So, you know, like I, I'm I'm well aware that yes, we did not grow from 200 to fucking 800,000. And I'm not, I'm not sad about that because that number in itself, the 216 that I just read off to you guys literally for the first fucking time, I'm very self-aware and very aware overall that that is a very, very large number. And I'm plenty happy with that. We could make that number 10 years in a row and I would be like, okay, cool. Obviously I want us to grow and I want us to become much larger at scale and be able to push the limits on a lot of things and, and these different dreams and ideas that I have will need more money in order to accomplish those things. But the given point was I expected us to grow a lot more. Unfortunately, as we'll discuss, the income that I make is very, very heavily invested into the summer months leading up to football, May, June, July, August. It's because we're getting a lot of preseason buzz, we're getting a lot of training camp buzz, and those preseason games, not having them was absolutely killer. So we're talking about two months of high traffic, high engagement, high buzz type shit that just got wiped out the business plan. It's like being a ski resort, you're a ski business, and then all of a sudden, mother nature comes down and was like, listen, we're just not gonna snow on you this year, okay? Y'all will figure it out though. Get a different turf to play on or some shit, right? Like that's kind of what happened. Without having those three to four months of buzz, yes, the NFL season happened and I'm I'm very, very grateful for that because otherwise we probably would have made no fucking money this year and that would have been a whole different conversation. This would have been from my mom's fucking house. I probably would have had tears involved in this video. The point is we got a lot of our shit wiped out because most of our money comes in during those months and without having a lot of people getting ready for the season, getting hyped up for the season, a lot of leagues fell under. A lot of those leagues that were, you know, friends for a while, but not maybe tight, or there's a lot of work leagues, obviously, like if you're not in your office, you're not creating a work league, right? So there weren't physically people together in order to initiate the conversations for those types of leagues. And a huge, huge portion of just regular leagues between friends, family members, and coworkers and things like that just dropped off. And that's a huge portion of my audience, right? My audience comes and goes for the most part, late August into early September is when we get like exponential growth, exponential sales and shit like that. And we just didn't have it this year. And it was an industry wide thing. This is not me looking at it and being like, fuck, like we didn't have a good year because we didn't work hard or we didn't put out good content. I think what we did this year was fucking incredible. I think one of the main things that I talked about, one of my goals, right? When I left Brooklyn last year to move here, I was so fucking burnt out by the end of the season last year that I literally, I physically Physically needed to leave the East Coast and I was traveling. I don't know if you guys remember that, but like the entire month of January, I was I was traveling last year and I went down to Florida. We went down to fucking New Orleans. I went to Vegas. I went to San Diego for a while. I was so burnt out and I was like, dude, I can't, I can't do another season like that where I'm just not enjoying what I'm doing. Each year I kind of go into, I kind of go into the season with, with an overarching goal of what the brand and what the content is going to structure itself around or what I want my life kind of to, structure itself around within the content. I don't, this does not make sense, but I'll explain it in a sec. Two years ago, when I first left my job 
and I was like, we're gonna do this fantasy shit full time. I was like, okay, I'm gonna put my fucking head down. We're gonna grind my, I'm gonna grind my face off. We're gonna focus on growth. We're gonna focus on making money. We're gonna focus on growing, 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 growing more, bigger, better, faster, stronger. And we did that. And we hit, like, listen, I was 26 years old and we hit $200,000 in revenue. And I was like, holy shit, like this is fucking insane. Like never in my wildest dreams would I have, I, I, I'd imagine it would have happened, but not by the time I was like 26, excuse me. So we hit the numbers. And the only reason I kind of like say that story is because nowadays you see 26 year olds hitting making like $10 million a year on all these social media platforms and shit. So it's nothing like impressive, but it was very fucking cool for me. And I'm sure it's pretty cool for the people that have followed me kind of along this journey as I've left New Jersey and done whatever the fuck it is, you know. Hitting that was fantastic until I hit a wall, which was like very early on in the season. I was like, dude, I hate what I'm doing right now. Like I'm so burnt out. I'm not enjoying anything I'm doing. Was it worth it? So at the end of the season, after I traveled, like the key goal I said to myself was like, okay, in 2020, my focus is not gonna be on growing. My focus is not gonna be on subscribers, is not gonna be on making money. My goal is purely gonna be based on enjoying what I'm doing making content that's fun to make. And that was it. Like that was my only goal for 2020. Legitimately, that was my only goal for 2020. And did we grow less? Yes, but I think a lot of that had to do with COVID. I think our content was way better this year, given that mindset. We've also grown in a lot of other areas. We're not gonna get into that. We're talking about money. I don't even remember why I went on this tangent, but that was my goal. It was 2019, it was growth, it was revenue, it was subscribers, it was numbers, it was big, 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 big. Let's shoot this motherfucker to the moon. This year, it was pulled back down to earth, Nicholas. Take care of your mentals, the rest will fall in line. I felt burnt out by the end of the year a little bit, but nothing like it was last year. So I feel a lot better, I feel energized. Like I love this time of the off season when I get to wake up and I, I love waking up and, and getting to work immediately. Like I, I truly, truly, truly fucking love this time of the year where I get to be creative and I get to work on very business focused things. Like this shit is so, so fun for me. Google AdSense this year we made $11,575 off of Google AdSense. So that was actually a decrease from the year prior because the views were down. Subscribers didn't grow as much. The views overall were down because a lot of people didn't play fantasy this year is what I'm saying. You'll hear me echo that over and over again. Again, I'm not worried. I'm a little bit worried long-term. Like a lot of those leagues that probably disbanded a little bit. I'm thinking about like my college league that I was in. Like we were kind of about it for a while. It was kind of like a flaky little bit of a league, but that was still, that's still 12 people kind of getting out of the fantasy football ecosphere it's just another fucking word i'm making up over there but there's gonna be a lot of leagues that are like borderline even if you get about like 60 percent of those you know flyby leagues that's still a big drop off in the market overall so we had google adsense 11.5 that is strictly the advertisements within my youtube videos that is strictly payouts from youtube not advertisers that i plug nothing like that there's strictly ads in youtube now the other type of advertising straight working with brands and they say hey we want you to plug in this product that we have that we think will be a good fit for your audience you do a 30 second 60 second 90 second i don't I, whatever the fuck they literally when i talk to brands it's actually kind of funny they like send me over they're like here are our talking points here's the creative we're going to use and i'm just like yeah i'm going to do my own thing if you don't mind and they're always like really open they like that they like when the creator does their own thing but i just like can't plug like the other day when i plugged geology for the first time i just got back from the gym so i do need to shower after this and I actually need to use the bathroom. I'm gonna take out with me, but not some freaky shit. We're going into vlog mode. It's crap. So here's what we're doing in the bathroom. We're not taking a shit. So I know a lot of my audience is younger dudes, and a lot of y'all do not take care of your face, which is very important if you want to stay young forever, like I do. Now, I don't sleep well or ever, and a lot of y'all probably are hard workers too, so sometimes you look like that is why it is important to take care of your face. Now, I feel like you're not really a YouTuber until you talk about your skincare routine, or until some company comes out and like sponsors you and like, hey, plug our skincare shit. So, like, this kind of makes me feel official. What's crazy is this company, Geology, I've been using for like a year and a half, and I am completely new to skincare, but they reach out to me and they're like, we're, we want to work, look terrible. We're not in the business, although I look terrible, we're not in the business of looking terrible. And you might be like, I don't even know what the fuck to start. That's why Geology is beautiful. They were the first skincare thing I ever used. I had no idea what I was doing. It literally when I did a vlog, basically, and I went to the bathroom and washed my face in the middle of a fantasy video. That shit works so well for brands. When they let the creator do their thing, the sales are through the fucking roof. Because you guys see me put it in action. You guys believe that I believe in the product. So advertising via regular companies, $8,770. Now the way this works, typically I work on a CPM basis. That means cost per 1,000 views. So if a company reaches out to me and they say, hey Nick, how much does it cost to advertise on your channel, I'll tell them I usually work on between a $25 and a $35 CPM. I put out a video, it gets 10,000 views, okay? So if I'm working on a $30 CPM, it's $30 for every 1,000 views, okay? So you times that by 10, that's gonna be $300. They pay me for 10,000 views on my channel if we're working on a $30 CPM. You can move that up, you can move that down. It's different depending on if you're in the podcast industry versus the YouTube industry. And it's been a little tricky 
tricky, obviously, honestly, getting the rates up a little bit because most of the companies that advertise within the fantasy space are used to advertising on podcasts. And I'm here like, dude, video, I understand like where you're coming from as a brand, but also video is like far, far, far more powerful as an advertising platform. The way I could do that plug like I did with geology, you can't do that on a podcast. So yes, podcast advertising works very well, but YouTube works better. And that's why we charge a little bit more. So we made about eight, seven from that. And advertising, when I talk about advertising like this, this is purely like a branding play. This is purely without having sales expected on the back end. Like they expect it on the front end. They're saying, hey, like we think your audience is a good fit. This is more, it's honestly the way advertising versus affiliates, which I'll get into in a second, straight up advertising like that, where they're doing it cost per view is them taking on more risk. Pretty much the only way I work with companies nowadays, unless they are a perfect fit for my audience. I think an affiliate deal will work well. And I'll, I'll explain that in a second with the next subject. But in terms of advertising, man, advertising is a little bit risky for them. They're not like, hey, you need to hit this number. You're not getting paid unless you get these sales. It's straight up like they're paying me for the views. They're not paying me for sales. So if I put out a video that gets 10,000 views and zero sales, they're still paying me for it. If you work with an affiliate who gives you a promo code and they're saying, hey, we'll give you X number of dollars for every person that gets the, that you get to sign up, obviously you're a lot more sales driven. Like you have to make sure people are buying the product that you're pitching to them. Otherwise you're not getting paid, which is why creators typically like to work with advertisers on this kind of CP. A lot of, a lot of advertisers, uh, you could do it however you want. You could do it on a CPM basis. You could do it telling them upfront. We'll just be like, hey, I'll, give me X number of dollars for the next 10 shows. And we'll make sure that every one of those shows has like a minimum of 10,000 downloads or something like that. It can, you can get creative with however you want to do it, whatever is like more comfortable to you and whatever is more familiar to you as a creator. So we have the advertising and then we have affiliates. Affiliates are interesting and I'll, I'll go off the rip and just say we made $102,897 from affiliates this year. And I will say, a lot of these motherfuckers, affiliates, advertisers, I probably, I, you know what, also this number, the revenue number, which was at 216, probably should be closer to around, two, actually should be around 275. Because what happens when you work with these fucking brands is like, they'll be like, yeah, we're working on like a net 72 day fucking contract. So they don't gotta pay forever. I'll do an ad read. Like some of the ad reads that you guys probably heard me read about Manscaped like four months ago, I still ain't got paid for that shit. And it's like, dude, I'm like, pay me my money. No, but on a serious note, a lot of times, like I don't, if I'm doing for a taxes and accounting, they haven't paid me for the, some of the stuff that they've done, that I've done yet. So that won't go into these kind of videos until I actually get paid for it, which will be 2021. Up to this point, affiliate earnings, $102,897.56. Okay, that's the big money maker there. That has been the big money maker for the last couple of years. If you guys remember, I worked with a company called Draft. Draft was owned by FanDuel. They were the best ball platform, right? They had recently turned into Underdog, but the same dudes that made Draft made Underdog. And I plugged them this summer a lot. I did not make any money from them this summer because it was more of an investment on my part. So I'm sitting here editing the vlog right now and I realized I left out a piece that I was gonna talk to you guys about. I brought up uh, working with Draft as an affiliate partner and then I talked about how I had worked with Underdog. Same dudes who created Draft, created Underdog this previous summer. So I wanted to work with them again. One, because obviously it was a great partnership for our business. Both sides of the partnership benefited from it. But two, I like those dudes a lot. Good guys, smart guys, just guys I'd wanna be involved with going forward in this industry. However, it was their first year in business and they didn't have a marketing budget like they did when they were with FanDuel. Thus, they were not giving out really high CPAs cost per acquisition per customer. For every sign up, I would get, I think it was like $60 per person that we got to sign up. They weren't doing that this year with Newtime Affiliates. Instead of taking like a cash payment where I was like, okay, I'll make, you know, six to eight videos for you throughout the summer to bring in new guys and you guys give me X number of dollars. Why don't I take equity in the company? So that's what I did. Since I believe in them and I believe in the product and I believe in the business and I believe in the growth that they'll have eventually, <clears throat> rather than selling myself out and taking a short-term deal right now or being like, let's hold off till next year and not do any marketing for them. I was like, okay, we'll take a long-term approach. I'll do the work right now. They give me something that's gonna be worth something down the road, hopefully. So we took a, a very, 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 very small percentage piece of equity. And those are the things I'm gonna be looking at going forward when it comes to investing, when it comes to working with companies, when it comes to partners that I really believe in, and I think they're building like a really strong foundation or a base or whatever. Those are the type of deals that I will be 
looking to be a little bit more creative with rather than just like a cash payment or a CPA deal. Maybe it's something with equity. Maybe it's something, I don't know. Like I've actually reached out to one company in terms of maybe not buying them, but taking a, a large portion of equity and making it like a full on partnership ownership. Very premature. Probably even if we did that, it wouldn't happen for a couple of years. But those are the things that I will be looking at moving forward. I just, I remembered that I had talked about it in the video and I didn't really get into it with y'all. So I actually, for tax purposes, I have no fucking idea how you write, like what you put in for equity. Now affiliates, you guys know I've worked very closely with Monkey Knife Fight. Now Monkey Knife Fight is a relatively new startup in the industry. And what happens with the startups in this industry is they, they get a lot of like VC funding money and they use it to capture an audience. When you have to compete against the DraftKings and the FanDuel's who have already spent tens and hundreds of million dollars in marketing, the only way for you to catch up is to spend a fuckload in marketing, hoping that a couple years down the road, it catches back up to being worth what you put into it. So a lot of these companies that you work with, especially on an affiliate basis, pay you a lot of money to get players to sign up. So I feel fortunate to be in this space right now where there's a lot of money kind of being flying around, but I'm gonna take advantage of it as much as I can. The tough part about affiliates is like, the tough part about doing what I guess I'm doing or just being a content creator in general is like, you really never know where your revenue source is gonna come from. You really don't. Year over year, things could happen. I've said this in my previous videos, literally this video, but last year and the year before, it's like, oh, you know, like one company can go under and then you're kind of fucked. And Draft was the company that went under and we made probably 75 or $80,000 from them one summer just off pure fucking signups. And when they were gone, I was like, holy shit, like how do I make up the hole in the revenue for the following year? You have to innovate, you have to adapt, you have to find new partners, you have to find new revenue sources or whatever. And this company was one of them. So I don't want to get into specifics again with like the other companies and how much each affiliate actually like paid out for each thing. But Monkey Knife Fight was definitely my favorite partner to work with this year. Fantastic company. They have great reps that I actually sat down with. And like I said, I don't work on an affiliate basis with a lot of companies. This was one that I trusted. I actually met them out in Vegas, like the, the reps and the CEO. So I sat down. I was like, okay, this is like something I can get, you know, I can get in bed with them. Okay. We could do the tango. And we worked from there. It was funny because they reached out to me when we first started working, we were getting a few affiliate signups and they were like, do you, do you ever think about like sponsoring the draft guide? And the draft guide is a big money maker for us, which I'll talk about in a second as well. The draft guide that we sell each summer, I was like, no, because when I, when they said sponsoring the draft guide, I thought they were referring to like literally like putting their logo and advertisements within the draft guide. And I was like, I don't want all that shit everywhere and making it flashy and whatever. I just, just want information straight to your fucking face holes. Sorry. I forgot I had fucking chicken in the oven and you know, this is gonna be a long one. So I figured I'd grab myself a bear. Um, I was talking about sponsoring the draft guide. I had a different idea of what they meant by that. And it was basically like, we give an incentive to our users to sign up for their platform in order for them to get my draft guide. That's what the sponsoring was. So you guys heard me all summer, basically like if you sign up on Monkey Knife Fight and play on there for $10 using my promo code, I'm gonna give you the draft guide for free. Now, normally we sell the draft guide for like 50 bucks. So that was a huge one. You get the $10 to play with on Monkey Knife Fight. They give you a 100% deposit match bonus. So you actually get $20 to play with and then you get my draft guide for free. So you're getting a $70 value for $10. It works out for all fucking parties involved. You guys get a huge discount. I get a big kickback worth more than my draft guide would have been on one sale to you guys. And then they get the new customer onto their platform, which is what their entire business model right now is all about. It was like the perfect partnership for me at the time. And what's difficult about the affiliates is again, like draft, it could go under, you never fucking know what's going to happen. So you can't depend on them Two, You've already saturated your audience in a sense. So a lot of you guys signed up for Monkey Knife Fight using my promo code to get the draft guide. I can't, it's not like, I mean, I can do it again next year, but we're gonna have a lot less success with the campaign with that company because the ones that were gonna use it probably already used it. And I know there's a lot left to be desired there, obviously, because it's gotta be 21 and over to do it. They're not in every state so far. So like, there's a lot of people that weren't able to take advantage of this stuff. So there's a lot more intricacies and there, there are bonuses involved in the contracts, which we just hit a really big bonus last week, which is fucking awesome. So thank you for anyone that signed up within the previous month or so. But yeah, six figures on the affiliates. And that will probably be the case going forward for many of the years, as long as these new software and tech and startups and gambling companies keep coming into the space, man, we will, keep taking advantage of that because it's valuable, man, to you guys. Like you guys like the platforms, we give you a nice fucking sign up bonus for it and they give us a good kickback. So in the end, everybody wins. I also lied, I found another affiliate we worked with that was like an extra $4,000, which kicks up to whatever it was, like 106 overall. Let's move on to the next source. And that is the draft guide altogether. So 
basically the way I, I broke down the draft guide sales. So we had the pure draft guide sales, which came out to $61,368, which is a lot. But again, we sell it for $50 at the, at the maximum amount. If you're buying the dynasty guide plus the season long guide at full price, it's 50. Along the way, we do discounts and some people only buy the rookie guide. Some people only buy the season long guide. So it's a mixture and I'm not gonna be able to do the breakdown for you right now. But overall, $61,000 made from just buying the draft guide. Now, overall, I would probably include 70 to 80% of the affiliate money that we made from the monkey knife fight deal into the draft guide because that was the big, you know, that was the big pull for audience members to sign up for monkey knife fight. They got the draft guide. So while the pure sales were only $61,000, I would say we could probably double that if not more from the affiliate deal that we had giving away. So that's always been our big money maker. And I think that will continue to be our big flagship products. But with the draft guide, this is like the big thing for 2021 for me is we are, we are actually, I'm going to go into, I'm going to go into like a little bit of futuristic talk or 2021 plans at the end of the breakdowns. So draft guide was 61. We could look at merch. Merch was about $2,000. When you do drop shipping, when you don't actually hold inventory, they take a shitload of the, the profit margin away from you. So realistically, we're making like $5 on a t-shirt and we're not selling 50,000 t-shirts. So it's not really a big part of our plan. And then we have Patreon. So realistically, I mean, that those are the money makers for us. It is affiliates, it is straight up sponsorships, and it is a draft guide sales. And then Patreon, YouTube. Patreon this year was a big increase for us. That was really big for us and I was focused on making making sure that that was the case, which is why we provided a lot more things for Patreon members, mainly for the Dynasty side of things, like the Discord was really big to bring on, as well as starting up all the Big Dogs Dynasty startup leagues, which I think this has a chance to grow into a fucking massive, massive money maker for us, which we're working on something that would actually wipe Patreon out. So we made $30,500 on Patreon this year. Last year, I wanna say that was at like $13,000, so it was almost two and a half X. And I look at things like in a growth period, overall, yeah, we didn't make that much more money than we did last year, but I think we made it in the right places. We came down in advertisements a lot because when I reached out to some of the sponsors that we had worked with previous years, like uh, Sleeper, for example, you guys know the Sleeper app where you play fantasy football leagues and shit. They had been advertising with us last year and I reached out and I was like, you guys want to run it back this year? And they were like, no, because of COVID, like we're looking at economic difficult decisions to decipher within our business. And they were like, it's between upping our marketing budget or keeping some of our team members on board, like keeping them employed. And they're like, we want to keep them employed. And I was like, respect, bro. Keep your money, keep your players, keep your guys on your team or whatever. But that's what happens. Like we lost like three or four different advertisers that we were working with in the previous year. We just didn't have them this year, which probably was an extra, I don't know, 20, 30 K that we had to make up in a different portion. But Patreon is something that we can depend on going forward year over year and month over month. So I'm excited to see how this grows. So that's that's the sum of it. Like like I said, it's very streamlined. It's, our, our revenue sources are very well kept together in terms of where it's coming in from. When we look at expenses, you have things like business travel. Like anytime I went out somewhere, I like tried to meet up with a client, you put on business expenses. Contract labor is a big one for us. So a lot of you guys ask me like, do you pay the team? Do you pay Max? Do you pay Snacks? Do you pay Noah and Mike and all those guys? So for the most part, uh, Scott is the person I've by far and away paid the most this year and probably will continue to pay uh, the most. He's one of our editors, but the other guys are not on the team full time. The other guys are not, they're not even like on a contract. I'm not paying them hundred dollars a week. I'm not paying them a thousand dollars a month or anything like that. Realistically, I just throw them fucking cash every once in a while. I'm just like, oh, here you go. Fucking happy Hanukkah or some shit. And there's a little like bonus in there. So contract work altogether came out to around $25,000. So I paid people $25,000 this year. Dr. Morse helping with the draft guide. He put in a big section of the draft guide in terms of like injuries and injury outlooks and things like that. So so he made quite a quite a nice fucking hefty amount of money from me because we did it on a per purchase sale. Like he got X number of dollars per, I think it was like $2 or two, 250 or something like that. And then an incentive for each thousand that we sold. And we ended up selling like $3,000. So he ended up getting like $7,500 or eight. I, I paid him $7,300 this year just for doing the injury section of the draft guide. So that's something that I will look at this year. Like I'm not going to do it on a per sale basis. I'll tell him that I can do it upfront. I can give him like a fixed fee, but as we grow and we keep selling more and more draft guides, we go up from 2,000 to 3,000 to 5,000 to fucking 8,000 sales, it doesn't make sense for me to continue to pay him on a per sale basis for doing the same amount of work year over year. That's something that I'll have to think about. It's a side note, I might've even edited that part out. I don't know, but Scott gets paid. Dr. Morse gets paid on this list altogether. I've Noah, Animal, Ike, 
Scott again, like 75 times, snacks. So contract labor is one big expense. I've got to pay my own health insurance. That came out to about $3,000. I get the shittiest kind and I only get, it's literally called the catastrophic, am I is it focused on me? Focus, focus. It's literally called the catastrophic plan and I only have it because my mom would absolutely murder me if I didn't have health insurance. We have software. You guys might not believe me, but software is an expensive motherfucker when you are running an online business. So our software expenses came out to, actually it wasn't that bad, it was like $5,000. Between an email software, so like collecting your guys' emails and being able to email you is super fucking expensive. ConvertKit was like $1,200 for the year, which we'll be trying to pivot away to a less expensive one. But we have like Adobe, you know, for Photoshop, Premiere Pro. We have uh, Shopify. We have the texting platform that we also rolled out this year, which is like $100 a month. So these things add up really, really quickly, along with like just some of the fantasy sites that we use, like PFF is $200 for the year, things like that. So software expenses came out to around five to $6,000. Then you have random supplies. That's what they're called IRS classifications. Lenses, cameras, lighting, anything, microphone. That shit, you can imagine, adds up quickly because, you know, cameras and this kind of equipment runs in the hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So we spent a little over $10,000 on this kind of stuff, you know, buying studio chairs, buying an extra camera, buying that lens was fucking absurd, buying different lighting. So that stuff, again, adds up very quickly. So any of the supplies came up to about 10.5. And then the biggest expense, you're like, okay, so how the fuck did you hit $90,000? Well, this studio is expensive as fuck and i'm not bragging that's more like nick you're a moron for renting out a place like this that costs almost four thousand dollars a month the reason why i chose a place like this where looking back on it now like i do i have no business living here right now by myself when i first rented this place out um, I'm, some of you guys probably watched those vlogs like how fucking excited i was we were literally noah was supposed to come live here for the summer last year we were supposed to have two interns also living here last year it was supposed to be noah it was supposed to be two interns snacks and animal or here all the time it's supposed to be people coming in and out obviously covid didn't allow that so we're stuck here with this expensive ass studio with a lot of space that we didn't really get to utilize and create and i wanted to bring in my friends from outside like not even bdge related and start filming and recording and doing a bunch of other shit so we had a lot of plans and stuff and then uh, we sunk a lot of money so four thousand times fucking 12 or whatever for the year comes out to around fifty thousand dollars for an expense i don't know if we're gonna i'm gonna renegotiate this rent obviously and i'm gonna try to bring it down like significantly and if i can't there's real estate all over new york city right now that is so so far below market that i'll be able to grab something that I like. Probably similar size for a much cheaper price. We'll have to see where the headquarters goes from there. So that was that, that was basically the big expenses. We had the studio, we had the contract labor, so you know, paying people that helped me work. We had software and we had supplies. That came out to a lot of money. Now, looking forward, the big investments that we're gonna be making this year is we are creating the mobile app for the draft guide because the draft guide is Great money maker for us. I get nervous about pivoting. Like I, I'm like, yo, as soon as I see other people doing what we're doing, I'm like, we need to, we need to make it different. We need to make it better. And sometimes I wonder if I'm doing that too quickly. Like I'm like, okay, there's no reason. Like we just had such a good year with it. There's no reason to make it completely different now. But other times I'm like, I look around and you know we made the draft guide, and then every YouTube channel, every fantasy brand, every X Y Z makes a draft guide, and I'm like, okay this is going to get super saturated super quickly and even if you guys love me and even if my fantasy shit is the best just by default because the market's getting more saturated we need to start making moves we need to start being different and how do we be different by being ourself ironically so i'm like what do we do best what do y'all love about us best what content do we put out that's unlike other people's content and that's what we want to do and we want to put it into an app there are not a lot of a lot of brands or businesses with apps in this space right now. The footballers have a great draft guide app. We're looking to make it more of a lifestyle slash hub for the brand as well. So everything that's in the draft guide, typically all the fantasy football information that gets you all ready for drafts and stuff will be in there. That will be the main platform, but we get to play on that. Like we get to do a lot of mobile application things that we wouldn't be able to do online. And we wanna make it fun and we wanna make it something that we could utilize for like the next 10 years and be the home base for any sort of announcements we have. So the app is gonna be a heavy, heavy investment that's a big financial investment and i don't really know mike the guy who i've been working with to do the app development and stuff i think i've showed you guys this quickly on a uh, on a video before the app's in like very 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 beta like we haven't actually like started putting content into the app but we have the app here click it so we're working on it now but 
What became more of a pressing matter is the fact that I want to centralize all of our product offerings. So we've built this foundation of different products and different services that we have between the, the draft guide, but now we have two separate draft guides. We've got the season long, we've got the rookie dynasty, we've got Patreon, but we have multiple tiers of Patreon. We have the Discord, and within the Discord, you have the community, but you also have the place where you sign up for dynasty leagues. You have merchandise, which is on its on the blog website, which is where you could sign up for the newsletter. So we have all this shit that's fucking scattered everywhere. And what I want to do is centralize everything. I want to make a website where everything is on there, right? You want fucking one-on-one -on -one consultation? My or Noah or Mike or someone will be able to offer that to you literally from that website. You want to buy the draft guide? Also on that website. We want to make that into a membership website so we actually get rid of Patreon. We want to, we want to fucking delete the middlemen. Any good business should want to delete the middlemen, always. We want to get rid of Patreon. We want to get rid of the blog that we have right now where the merch is separated from Patreon, which is separated from the draft guide website because they're all different websites at this point. So we want to make one centralized hub where you can go and depending on what you're looking for, it's right there. Because what that'll do is that will provide, like you can go onto the website and you will purchase the draft guide. But you'll also see in the corner, like, oh, there's a Big Dogs t-shirt. Let me also put that into the cart. It's gonna be a website where you could purchase digitalized products, informational products, physical products, all in one. That's that's my plan right now. I don't know if it's gonna act. I don't even know if it's fucking possible to be honest with you, but that's the way I see things happening. And then we wanna transfer all that into the app, okay? So it's gonna be a centralized hub on the web. It's gonna be a centralized hub on the app. And once we do that, we could start, because once you start, we start offering these products and services, for a monetary purpose, and you start going into a million different directions. You start adding one here, and then adding here, and then adding a new one here, and before you know it, you're in five different places, and then I can't even tell you guys about it, because I'll be sitting there for 20 minutes being like, oh, but if you want this, go here, and if you want this, go here, and if you want this, go here. So if we can centralize it, and I say, listen, anything you want, you want advice, you want fucking t-shirts, you want whatever it is, go to www.blahblahblah.com. It's all there, right? Simple 10 seconds, rather than explaining 17 different parts to you, because then, once you have the solid foundation, you can start adding things in. Like right now, we don't have one-on-one -on -one consulting because I don't. Need, I wouldn't even know where to add that. Like, okay, you want one-on-one -on -one consulting? Where do you go? I don't fucking know. But if we can build a website that has everything house, all we do is add one simple web page to that website, and then we say, okay, we'll set it up through this. You put in this contact information. You put in the time. We can add uh, Calendly, which is a software that has calendar schedule. Like it, it's much more simple if we do it that way. So that's going to be the bigger investments into this year. Again, like rent will be big again. I want to have a studio where hopefully things will open back up and we can make this fucking place like I wanted it to be last year. Depending on how we do, what I, what I planned on doing was making a fuckload of money in 2020. And again, not in a bragging way, just to invest it all right back into the business. And I would have probably hired, I probably would have hired Noah full time. I probably would have maybe hired a video editor as well, full time. But that plan is going to be put on the back burner because we didn't make enough in order to do that. What we'll do is see how this year plays out, see if things go back to normal, which probably won't be the case because we've already had the combine canceled, which is like going to be a big detriment to a lot of brands that focus heavily on Dynasty, man. That's a killer to their content. So things like that, like I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable yet making heavy investments after seeing what happened this year, right? Like if growth stalls, we'll be fine. Like we could, we'll have enough cash. We're liquid enough to make it through to another year, another two years or whatever. But I don't want to put a heavy, heavy investment into something such as a full-time hire where I'm guaranteeing someone here's $60,000 and us not grow, you know? So those are the things I'm thinking about. I'm also thinking about just strictly as a business owner. And I've always thought to myself, you know, I would never take investment money. I would never let anybody take a percentage of what we're building here. But as you grow as a person, man, like you're, you ideate about certain things and you start to become passionate about different things. Different things just drive you. Like you can't fake that. Like I can't, I can't pretend that just being in the trenches and doing fantasy research and making videos all day is, is what drives me anymore. But I, I, like, I like putting it all together. I like managing people. I like building this. And I've always liked doing that, but I want to do that at scale now. And I don't want to, I don't want to rush it. Something I've always said for some reason, I don't know why this, like why I said this, I had no experience to say something like this, but I've always thought if you needed to take on investor money, you're moving too fast. And that is true. That is true in a sense, but there are companies that need to scale quickly. And we're not one of those. Like I, again, I'm just a kid fucking making YouTube videos realistically at this point, but we're becoming a team and we're building a real business here. 
and I can continue making videos and be fine for the next 15 years on a personal level. Like $200,000 is a, an absurd amount of money for someone my age to make. And I wanna put it all back into the business and I wanna grow it so that my friends get to enjoy it as well. Like I, this, it, it's, it's, it's weird, it's uncomfortable for me to be honest with you, just having this much money here and not putting it to good use. I'm just not experienced enough to know what actually is good use. Like do I hire two people right now and put us on the borderline of non-profit like, is that good? Is that how I'm supposed to fucking run a bit? I don't know. This is what these vlogs are. Just me documenting my process of fucking things up and learning along the way. But the reason I started this other this other rambling was that it, we'll see how things go next, next summer. If things go back to, you know, plan, if we hit very high projected growth numbers like I thought we were gonna do this year, I will seriously start to consider uh, investor money. And by investor money, it won't be like VC money. I would ask my friends, I would ask people that I'm very close to if they believe in what we're doing and they wanna put something into this. And that's obviously another, that's a big step away. I don't, I have no idea how that works. I don't know how much money I could ask from them. I don't even know what I would give them in return. Like it's easy to be like, yeah, let me, uh, let me give me $50,000 for 8% of my company. But like one, what the fuck is 8% of my company? Like, how do you value, how do you evaluate a company? I have no idea what that even means. 8%, like, at any time, are you just able to be like, I'm just gonna cash in 8%? Like, we're not a public, I guess you're a privately held company, so you have shares. I'd say, I don't know how this shit works. That's the problem, right? Like, I'm trying to scale. I'm trying to do this shit as a business person, but I don't actually know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm learning. This is the fun part for me. Like, this is what I enjoy doing. So I'm ready to scale up. I'm ready to fucking move this thing quickly. I just don't want to do it stupidly. So for a while, I was content, content, content with doing it slowly, building the foundation, and you know grinding it out year over year and now i'm like listen there are a lot of people involved in this shit and i i want to move this thing quick there's not a lot of there's plenty of time left but i feel like we're in a golden opportunity right now where we're still fucking young and healthy and hungry and uh there's a lot of opportunity to be had so i want to fucking hit the ground running i want to do it asap i'll see what's what after this year and then i can you know the other thing is too like i can pay people in equity like that, I think that's why I started this conversation as well, because the guy that's developing the app right now for me and helping me with the whole centralized hub thing, we haven't really talked about money, which is like good, because we were both on the same page from the beginning. He's like, dude, I just like building cool shit with cool people doing cool things. And I was like, fuck, like a very nice compliment of you. I don't think I'm that cool, but like we're definitely building something cool here. And he was just like, yeah, like we'll figure out the payment stuff later. Let's just like make this thing happen. Let's make it into reality. And that's how I, I like to work too. Like I don't like getting caught up in numbers. And that's something that another reason I hate working with advertisers they are so like nitpicky about this kind of stuff. Like you need to hit this number. You need to burp, 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 burp. I'm like, shut the fuck up and let me do my thing. And I guarantee you I'll pile up the sales for you. Okay. Just, 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 just easy does it. He did mention like equity at one point. We didn't get into a deep conversation. So I feel like that's probably the, what he's thinking of when all is said and done, but I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I'm not opposed to that. I just need to figure out like what the fuck we're doing. We need to, we need to actually make this stuff into reality, make it good, make me happy with what we have as the product, as the service in order for me to want to give up equity in it. And then I would, I can give up equity to my friends as well. Like I have no problem doing that because um, they're the ones that are here helping me build it and, and working really fucking hard on it. So I always appreciate them, of course. Um, equity would not be my first choice, but also like people can't live on equity. You can't fucking buy Mickey D's with equity. So we need money. So if I were to get investments, if I were to take on money, it would strictly be to hire. It would be to, you know, and, and it's it's not like my, my friends and, and the people that I work with and Scott and all those guys, they don't work any less hard because I'm not paying them, but it would free up a lot of one peace of mind for them and not having to work at other jobs so they could focus strictly on this eight, 10, 12 hours a day. And that's where the magic comes in for the scaling. Like if all of them got to focus on what we're building here all day, every day, like I am, we would be able to fucking make magic here. And uh, I truly believe that. So that's why I'm starting to think about taking on more money, investing more of my money back into it. I haven't even talked about like investments and stuff. I've gotten a little bit more serious with the money since we're making more money and I have a lot of just like empty cash laying around. I know that's really, really dumb to do. You need to be making it grow for you. So I've been looking at investing more. I just wanna invest more back into the business because also when I invest more back into the business, the less taxes I have to pay because those are obviously expenses and shit. So 
always a lot of moving parts here. I realize that like when I talk about this, it seems so normal to me, but that was probably a lot for you guys to take in there. Um, if you have any questions at all, if you if you if you have any questions at all about a, like a business that you're running or starting or um, currently in the works with, and anything I said you think I might be of help to you with that, you know something that I've experienced already, and maybe I could put you on the right path. Obviously, feel free to comment down below. I comment back on every vlog comment pretty much. Uh, you can email me info at bigdogsfantasy.com. Any, anything you need help with, like make sure that you reach out to me on uh, on the personal stuff. And any other questions in general, like even if you're not in a fucking, you know, you're not in business, you're in college or whatever, you have any questions about running a business or marketing or branding or, you know, whatever the fuck it may be. Any, any questions that were spurned from the making of this video, no animals were harmed in the making of this video, but questions may have been created in your brain from the making of this video, drop them down below. I'll tell you what, I come off harsh, but I'm a friendly person, I promise. I'm a good person. My mom said that. We'll do a projections video. I'm not even sure if I wanna make a projections video, because again, I think this is gonna be a weird year to try to project, because the previous three years, we had like growth that was projectable in a sense. It's a very unprojectable industry because it grows ex exponentially, but it's also seasonal, so it's hard to project things. I'm gonna stop talking now because you guys, there's probably no one left here. But if you are left, uh, you can hit the thumbs up button. Just let me know you like these kind of videos. And I'll make them year in, year out. I'll make them until we're a fucking zillion dollar company. How about that? Sitting at my desk, talking face to face with y'all. I love doing this shit. It's what I do this for, okay? So thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll probably see you on uh, whatever the next... Filming this on January 22nd. No, January 21st. Thursday, January 21st. It is 9.33 p.m. January. Like, this is... I, I'm so weird. Like, why, do, why did I randomly just do this at 9.30 p.m. on a Thursday night? Like, why does the inspiration to make this... I could have made this video in any of the last 21 days after New Year's. Why did I just do it now? I wonder. It's so weird. Anyways, yeah, January 21st. Uh, I'll try to get this out probably by Monday, January 25th. This was a longer fucking dialogue, a longer novel, so it might take me a little while to edit it up. But yeah, I'll see y'all in whatever the fuck the next video is. All of.